Hello, bonjour, konnichiwa, marhaba, yakwe, and hola. Welcome to our virtual city life recap, where you're going to have the opportunity to learn from 19 different city departments on how they work and operate. You're going to have the opportunity to also see how you can get connected and make a difference within our community. So, if you're interested in also participating in an in-person event, we offer them in fall and also in the spring. You can find us at www.cityofdubuque.org backslash city life. So without further ado, let's begin. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for um, taking the time to participate in City Life. Um, as previously mentioned, my name is Adrian Breitfelder and I am the City Clerk for the City of Dubuque. Um, I'm fairly new to the role. I just started in October of last year, um, so still learning a lot every day, but um, absolutely loving it. Um, so a little bit more about my, um, my personal story. Um, I grew up in North Carolina and moved to Dubuque in 2013 um, to start a position at IBM. Um, I was in a lot of different opportunities there from human resources to project management to audit and compliance. So it really um, gave me a solid skill set. Um, and I was certainly grateful that it gave me the opportunity to come to Dubuque, um, especially being from the East Coast, um, certainly was a a new opportunity for myself um, to see a different part of the country. And my initial plan was to only be there for um, a few years and then move on somewhere else. But similar to Temwa's personal story, um, I fell in love with the area, um, really uh, felt welcomed by the community, was able to establish some great connections and have a lot of great opportunities. And so I've been very happy to call Dubuque home for the past seven years. Um, in terms of my involvement with local government, um, my major was actually political science. And so I always had a passion for local government. And I actually helped out with um, the my North Carolina community's equivalent of city life. So got to learn a lot about departments in that way. Um, and so I was very grateful to have the opportunity to step into this role because I really feel like it's been a great fit for myself and I'm looking forward to telling you more about it and more about what the department does. Um, just a little more about um, uh, my background um, in terms of what I enjoy about working for the city. I think it's very rewarding to partner with a talented group of uh, teams and individuals to make a positive impact on the community. Even though I've only been with the city for a little less than six months, um, I've just been amazed by the, uh, the passion and the drive of all of the, the city employees that I've come into contact with. There really is a, a true passion for making a positive impact on the community. And it's just been amazing to see what each department is able to accomplish. Um, every department I would say is working on some very rewarding and innovative projects. And so I think it'll be great for you guys to have the opportunity through City Life to hear more about those. Um, as mentioned, what I enjoy about Dubuque really is the outdoors. And I think it's uh, fantastic that for um, a community and an area like the Midwest, which maybe isn't notoriously known for its outdoor opportunities, that there truly are a lot of amazing things right in our backyard. I love that I can only drive a few miles to the mines of Spain or Swiss Valley and have an incredible number of opportunities just to get outside and be in nature. And then in the winter, even though, yes, it can be a little cold, um, having the opportunity to do things like skiing or snowshoeing, those are opportunities we have that communities that maybe um, don't have that same winter weather get to enjoy. So I'd certainly love to, to make the best of it and um, enjoy having the different seasons. Um, and then just a few ways in which working for the government is an option for everyone. Um, I really feel that my presentation tonight will be able to share how um, citizens can interact with both city council and our boards and commissions, which are a really great way for um, citizens to get involved with uh, within the community. 
And so uh, with that as my little intro, I'm now happy to talk to you a bit more in depth about the city clerk's office. And so a little overview about um, what I'm going to specifically cover tonight um, is first um, starting with a overall overview of what the city clerk's office does for the city of Dubuque. I'll then talk about our city council meetings, and then I'll also talk about our boards and commissions as a way for um, citizens to be engaged with local government. So a little more about the city clerk's office and we have our mission statement um, posted on here. So we really are the um, administrative function to city council. We, um, are responsible for creating and posting the agendas for all city council meetings, as well as taking and posting meeting minutes of all actions that took place at that meeting. Um, also supporting city staff um, with any specific uh, administrative requests that they have if they need certain um, documentation um, about city uh, laws, then that's information that we'll provide to them. And then we also um, assist the public in a variety of ways as well. And I know that uh, Temwa has shared a few um, handouts with you guys that go into a bit more detail about what the city clerk's office does. And so that handout really covers um, a lot of the services that we do, um, including the city council meetings, um, publication of any legal notices as part of those city council meetings. And then we really are responsible for a lot of um, business licenses and permits that are required for the city. So um, bicycle licenses, uh, special event permits, if you're hosting an event on city property, um, alcohol and uh, tobacco licenses are overseen by our department, um, solicitors licenses, taxi licenses. So we really oversee um, a lot of, of various uh, various areas in the community um, that make us very public facing. Um, when you dial the um, city of Dubuque general phone number, it's our office that you'll hear first. And so we're typically um, one of the first um, departments that uh, the public come into contact with, and we're often responsible for helping uh, an individual to get in touch with the right department, because oftentimes someone will call us and they'll know what question they have, but they won't necessarily know which department they have to speak with to answer that question. So we kind of serve as that guiding department to get citizens to the specific area um, that they need to go um, within the city. And so then this just gives you a visual of who our team is. So that way, if you ever were to call us, you can now put a face to the name. So as mentioned, um, I, I serve as city clerk. And so my main responsibilities um, deal specifically with the city council. I'm the one um, who's in the core responsibility of uh, preparing the city council agendas, posting those agendas, um, attending every city council meeting, and um, uh, guiding uh, the public and council through each agenda piece and then documenting and posting the meeting minutes from each meeting. Tris Gleason serves as the assistant city clerk and her core responsibilities are um, the alcohol and tobacco licenses as well as um, boards and commissions uh, recruitment and um, uh, the application processing for those boards and commissions. And Pam McCarran serves as our permit clerk. She typically oversees all of these special event applications. So if you were interested in um, hosting a special event on city property and would need to submit an application, you would work with her through that process. She's also involved with many of our other types of licenses, such as our bicycle licenses, our um, various business licenses and taxi permits. So we each have our core little function. We're a very small but mighty team and we'll um, help each other out as needed. And so now I want to talk a little more about our city council meetings. So our city council uh, consists of seven members. We have a mayor, and then we have two at-large council members, which means they technically represent 
um, and can reside in any area of the city. And then we have um, four council members who represent specific wards. And so those wards are um, specifically defined areas within the city. And so depending on which area of the city you live will determine who your specific council member is. And so that seven member city council meets regularly every first and third Monday of the month at 6.30 p.m. Pre-COVID, we would meet in um, what was what is known as the historic federal building, which is located in downtown Dubuque. Um, but currently we have been meeting via GoToMeeting um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And so of course it's always, um, always fun in those situations because as with any meeting, there's typically always someone on mute or just always having to be like, can you say that again? So always a joy with, uh, with the virtual meetings leads to some interesting scenarios. Um, but yes, meetings are every uh, first and third Monday at 6.30 p.m. All of those meetings are open to the public. Um, it is in uh, Iowa code that any government entity that meets, um, that meeting is required to be open to the public. So uh, uh, naturally that includes our city council meetings. So the public is welcome to attend um, if they would just like to listen, if they're interested in learning more about what city council is discussing, you're more than welcome to listen um, to those meetings. Um, right now, because we meet virtually, um, it is via a go-to meeting link that we meet. But when I post the agenda, I do include the go-to meeting link on that agenda. Um, and you're also, it also includes a phone number as well. So if you'd prefer just listening over the phone, you do have the option to just dial in and listen in. In addition to just attending the city council meetings, we do provide a lot of opportunities for the public to um, participate and provide comments at the meeting. Um, and so some of those options are listed here. So a few different ways that you can get in touch with the city council. We do have an option for you to contact the city council directly via the City of Dubuque Council Contacts link. If you click on this link, um, it'll show you each of the council members and will give you the, uh, an opportunity to submit a message um, that will be sent to every single council member. So it's in a very, very effective way to get in touch with the city council. We also um, provide the opportunity to comment on the city's Facebook page. And um, the city's Facebook page does live stream the city council meetings. So that's another way for you to be able to view the council meeting. And if you have a comment during the meeting, you're able to comment on that that Facebook page is monitored. And so that comment will be recognized as part of the meeting. You're able to contact myself at ctyclerk at cityofdubuque.org if you have um, specific comments that you want to share with council. And then I forward those comments to the city council, or you have the option um, of participating in the city council meeting in the sections of the agenda where public input is allowed. We do have certain portions of the city council meeting where we welcome the public to um, provide input. And so uh, that is our other option um, if you would like to speak directly to the council at the meeting. And so that section is a great segue into a video that I'd like to show you guys next. Um, it's about a six minute video that covers uh, what the uh, city council meeting um, typically looks like. What's nice about this video too is that it provides an introduction by our current mayor, Mayor Roy D. Buell. So you'll get a visual of, um, of what he looks like. And the video also shows an image of uh, city council chambers. Unfortunately, we wish we could um, be touring council chambers tonight with you guys, but due to the pandemic, we're all safely virtual. So at least through this video, we can be able to uh, show you a visual of that. So I'm going to minimize this PowerPoint. Greetings. 
Greetings. I'm Dubuque Mayor Roy Buell. Our city's mission is to deliver excellent municipal services that plan for the community's future, including a financially sound government and citizens getting value for their tax dollars. I, along with the six members of the city council, strive daily to arrive at policy decisions that will position Dubuque to be among the top cities in the Midwest to live, work, raise a family, and enjoy life. Many of these decisions happen during regularly scheduled city council meetings here in the historic federal bill. Shortly, you'll be viewing a council meeting. First, we'd like to take a moment to help you understand the council meeting process and the various activities that occur during a council meeting. During a meeting, the city council works from an official agenda. The agenda is prepared by the city clerk's office and is posted no less than 24 hours before each meeting on the city's website and at city hall. Copies of the agenda are also available before each meeting in the city council chambers. The agenda is divided into different categories through which the city council conducts its business. This program will explain some of those categories. The first item of business is proclamations, which are prepared in recognition of an important person or event. Examples of proclamations include Fire Prevention Awareness Week or White Cane Safety Day. Individuals present to accept a proclamation will be asked to come to the podium, introduce themselves, and give a brief summary of the proclamation before the mayor reads and signs it. Next is the consent agenda. This is a group of items that are considered routine and are approved with one motion. If anyone wishes to discuss an item on the consent agenda, they should approach the podium when directed by the mayor, give their name and address, and identify the item they wish held for separate discussion. City council members are also given the opportunity to have any item on the consent agenda held for separate discussion. The majority of resolutions are adopted during the consent agenda. Resolutions are the most commonly used means of official action by the city council and generally require a simple majority vote. Next are the items to be set for public hearing, which are also generally approved with one motion. The scheduled date of the public hearing is announced as each item is read. These items are not open for public discussion at this time, but will come back to the city council table at a future meeting in the form of a public hearing, at which time public input is accepted. Next are the public hearings, which are those items that have been previously scheduled for hearing. State law requires that a public hearing be held on certain items of business, including certain zoning issues, the sale or lease of city owned property, and capital projects with an estimated cost exceeding thresholds determined by the Iowa State Code. The public has an opportunity to speak during a portion of each public hearing before it is voted on by the City Council. The meeting is then open to public input. Anyone in the Council Chambers may address the City Council on the action items on the agenda or on matters under the control of the City Council. Citizens are asked to approach the podium and state their name and address before proceeding with their comments. Individual remarks are limited to five minutes, and the overall public input period is limited to 30 minutes. It is important to know that under the Iowa Open Meetings Law, the City Council can take no formal action on comments given during public input, which do not relate to action items on the agenda. Action items are next on the agenda. These issues require separate discussion and action. Public input is only allowed at the discretion of the mayor or by a majority vote of the City Council. It is during this part of the meeting that most ordinances are adopted. Ordinances are the laws under which the city operates. State law requires that an ordinance be given three readings or occurring with three city council meetings, with one reading per meeting. However, the city council has the power to suspend the three reading rule and pass the proposed ordinance at one meeting. This is done by making motions commonly known as motion B and motion A. First, Motion B suspends the requirement that a proposed ordinance be considered and voted on for passage at two city council meetings prior to the meeting at which it is to be finally passed. Then, Motion A moves to final consideration and passage of the ordinance. Motion B requires the affirmative vote of a supermajority of the council, which means six of the seven members. Following the action items, the city council members will provide individual reports on matters they deem pertinent. After city council member reports, 
the city council will either adjourn the meeting or move to convene a closed session. Closed sessions are governed by state law and are not open to the public. State law also limits closed sessions to certain subjects, such as the discussion of strategy with legal counsel on matters involving litigation, the evaluation of an individual's professional competency, collective bargaining, or to discuss the purchase of real estate. Final action on matters discussed in closed session must be taken in an open meeting of the city council. That was a brief explanation of a sample council meeting agenda. I hope you found it informative and helpful. Duke City Council meetings are held on the first and third Monday of every month here in the second floor council chambers of the historic federal building. These meetings are broadcast live on City Channel Dubuque and streamed live on the city's website at cityofdubuque.org. Videos of past meetings are also available on demand on the city's website. Thank you for your interest in local government. So hopefully that was a good summary of uh, what the council meetings are like. I, I certainly understand that it's a, it's a lot of information to take in at first, um, but definitely having that little background, hopefully it'll be a little familiar um, if you've wanted to attend a meeting. And as the mayor mentioned at the end of the meeting, um, all previous meetings are archived on the city's website. So you're more than welcome to go and view those past meetings and uh, kind of get more of an idea of what a city council meeting might look like. Um, in terms of the um, agenda, it's always posted the Friday before a council meeting. So we have, we actually have our first council meeting of April this Monday, April 5th. And so I'll be posting the agenda on the city's website tomorrow. So everyone is welcome to view that agenda and get an idea of what city council plans on talking about on the Monday meeting. And then in terms of the um, meeting minutes, those are always typically posted the Friday after a city council meeting. They're posted on the city's website as well as posted in the um, Telegraph Herald. So if anyone um, is a subscriber to the Telegraph Herald, I definitely encourage you to view the classified section. I know one of the more least popular sections of the paper, but um, that's where you'll find all of the um, local government meeting minutes, as well as um, any uh, notices that we have to publish. Um, you might recall from the video, it mentioned that um, we have to, there are certain items that the council discusses that are known as a public hearing. Anything that is deemed a public hearing, we have to post notice of that in the Telegraph Herald as well, notifying the public of the date and time of that discussion. So if you do have the Telegraph Herald, I would definitely encourage you to just look through those classified section to get an idea of what council is specifically um, discussing. A lot of good opportunities for, for that engagement there. And then, the final um, piece that I wanted to cover with you guys um, about my department is um, boards and commissions. So boards and commissions are um, specified groups of uh, volunteers that each um, serve a specific um, purpose around a, a targeted area or interest. And they basically serve as an advisory role to city council um, around a specific topic. Um, and so they really are a great way to uh, discuss uh, certain policies and develop recommendations to city council. We really see them as, as one of the key ways for um, citizen involvement and citizen advocacy to our city council. Um, as mentioned, they help out with um, policy recommendations to the city council. Oftentimes the boards and commissions will um, determine uh, specific priorities and communicate those to council. Um, so that way council knows uh, what is uh, important at a citizen level. Um, they also provide um, a lot of support to city staff. Each board and commission is um, overseen by a city of Dubuque employee um, so oftentimes um, the employees will share 
updates with the border commission and seek feedback from that commission. So it's a, a great opportunity for city staff to have a outside perspective, a public perspective, um, because that's so crucial to the work that we do to have that feedback directly from the public. Um, it's also a great opportunity to promote the city and its programs. Um, a lot of our boards or commissions are involved with a specific city initiative. Um, just to give one example, we have a commission um, that is known as the Long Range Planning Advisory Commission, and they are mainly involved in um, Dubuque's comprehensive plan. And this comprehensive plan basically um, outlines the vision for the city's future. So for uh, that city planning department, they rely a lot on that commission to help with promoting that program, um, getting that plan, uh, more knowledge throughout the city and obtaining that feedback from citizens. Um, and then in terms of uh, the boards and commissions, again, there really are a variety of boards and commissions that are available for every interest. Um, I know one of the participants um, as on this program mentioned a, a love of history, um, and we do have a historic preservation commission, so that could be one of that interest. Um, we have the Arts and Cultural Affairs Commission, the Cable TV com Commission for anyone who's maybe interested in media services, anyone who has an interest in finance or auditing. We have the Investment Oversight Commission, uh, the Human Rights Commission, Housing Commission. There really are uh, a variety of commissions out there. And so I would certainly say that based on the commissions that we have, there really is one for every single interest that's out there. And then the other thing that I think is important to share and that my department is trying to share more with the community is that um, for a lot of our commissions, we really seek a diverse perspective and diverse background. Um, and so it's not for every single commission, it's not necessarily a requirement that you have a certain skill set or a certain resume. Because I think one of the um, stereotypes that we might have with some of our boards and commissions is a thought that an individual has to have a certain skill set or a certain level of expertise in order to participate in that commission. And the perspective that I would encourage all of you to consider when you look at our boards and commissions is thinking about um, just thinking about the that we don't necessarily need a specific level of expertise. What we're really seeking is a lot of, of diverse perspectives because that's at the core of what the boards are, and commissions are. It's really making sure that we have diverse representation and diverse ideas from a wide variety of people. And the other thing that I think is important to mention is that um, the, as I mentioned, each city, um, each border commission is staffed by a specific city department. And so that city department is there to uh, guide the commissioners and provide that um, what's known as subject matter expertise. So we don't expect our commissioners to have a strong amount of expertise. We really, we really rely on the city staff to guide the commissioners with that. And so I certainly hope that um, boards and commissions is something that um, each of you might consider if you think about how you would want to be involved with um, city government outside of your city life experience. Um, it really is a great way to um, meet other individuals in the community and work on a um, particular issue and have a, a strong sense of collaboration. Most of our commissions meet on a monthly basis. And um, on our website, we do list the specific um, dates and meeting times. The reason I didn't provide our list of openings for boards and commissions at this specific meeting is because we do plan on having some appointments made to the boards um, at Monday's council meeting. And so our list of vacancies is going to change after Monday. So I didn't want to give you a list that shows that a commission has a vacancy and have you apply for it, but then find out after Monday that that it's um that it's 
not no longer vacant. So I figured it would just be beneficial for your time just to share more about what our boards and commissions do and hope that um, it sparks your interest. And then definitely would encourage you um, to visit our boards and commissions website through the city of Dubuque. So you can learn more about which what each specific commission does. Um, we do have descriptions of every single commission. And so hopefully you can identify one that um, really matches what your passion is. And then I think just the only thing I, other thing I just wanna briefly share about with boards and commissions is that um, uh, for each uh, city department, we do have um, what's known as an equity plan where we really evaluate um, how we as a department can meet the, the needs of all of Dubuque's residents um, in an equitable way. And for um, the city clerk's office, boards and commissions um, is really at the core of our department's equity plan. Um, we're really considering how we can um, recruit and retain more diverse applicants and really obtain more diverse perspectives. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that that I mentioned that as well. And that was the main sections that I wanted to cover tonight. So um, I know it was a lot of information, but hopefully some um, interesting things that you guys learned about. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys had. Feel free to unmute if you have a question. Uh, I had a question. Would you be able to talk briefly about the application process for the boards and, and commissions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and that's an excellent question. Um, it's a fairly straightforward process. So what an applicant would do is um, they would um, fill out an application either online through our website or we do have um, paper applications available if that is um, an applicant's preference. Um, once the application is received by our office, we will confirm if there is a vacancy for that commission. If there is a vacancy, then we would put that um, application on a city council agenda. How the um, the applications are selected is it's actually um, an appointment that is made by the city council. And so what happens is the application gets presented to city council at one city council meeting. And at that time, city council will review the applicants. And then at the following city council meeting is when city council will actually make the appointment to that commission. At that first meeting where the council is um, considering the applicants, we do provide the um, applicants the opportunity to introduce themselves to council at that city council meeting. This isn't a requirement, but it is something we do encourage if an applicant does feel comfortable um, with that. And so that applicant would just introduce themselves and just provide a little background um, about themselves and why they're interested in being on that commission. If someone does not feel comfortable attending the council meeting or is unable to attend, then they're welcome to contact the city council directly through that council contacts link in order to share that background information with council about themselves. And so council makes the appointment um, for the commission and then our office would notify you that council made that appointment and get you um, the contact information for the city staff um, that oversees that border commission. And we would share your contact information with that um, city staff member so they can get in touch with you and let you know about the meetings. Be great, thank you. Yeah, and the only other thing I'll add is that for um, our boards and commissions, the main requirement, the requirement for all of them is that you do have to be a city of Dubuque resident. So if you live in 
Dubuque County outside of the city limits. Unfortunately, you're not eligible for a city of Dubuque commission. However, Dubuque County does have commissions as well that they're always seeking applicants for. So would certainly encourage you to look there. And then um, just the other thing that was mentioned that I'll just reiterate is that um, each commission typically meets um, on a monthly basis. And so we would just encourage you as you consider a border commission that you confirm um, when specifically that commission meets. We do list that on our details and openings page and confirm that that coincides with your, with your schedule in general. Awesome, awesome. Anybody else have any questions? Well, with that, thank you so much, Adrian, for that awesome presentation. Every single one of you, I encourage you to just to take a look at the different boards and commissions, but I also encourage you to think, who do you know that actually would be able to or has interest in making an impact or doing something within the community, but just doesn't know exactly how? So if you have anybody in mind, feel free to send them uh, either my way or Adrian's way now that you have had that awesome introduction and now you have a face uh, behind the position. So.